imagine you work at a place that has to move 20 million gallons of water through it every day. 20 million gallons. That's like 20 Olympic swimming pools or 400,000 bathtubs. But this is not just water. It's water that contains soaps, cleaning products, toilet paper, dental floss, grease, oil, Q-tips, and last but not least, poop. <laughs> How would you clean this water? What would you do with all that water at the end? And what would you do with the poop? Today I'm going to take you on a journey of one such facility that's responsible for cleaning all of this water for us. And it's called Brightwater. It's King County's newest wastewater treatment facility located in Woodinville. There are hundreds of these wastewater treatment facilities all over the world, and this is the one I'm going to showcase today. So let's take a step back and think about all the ways we use water at home. We wash our hands, we take showers, we do the dishes, we flush our toilets. In the United States, it is very easy for us to use water. It's so easy for us, we just turn on a faucet. And we use 100 gallons of water every day. 100 gallons. And that 100 gallons is combined with contaminants. We've got poop, bacteria, viruses, soaps, and chemicals. And Brightwater is responsible for cleaning 20 million gallons of that every day. Let's take a look at the summary of how this gets done. This is literally a flow chart. It's the way that the water moves through the treatment plant at Brightwater. Let's start here with the trash. The four Ps are what you should flush down your toilet and nothing else. Everything else should go in the trash. The four Ps are pee, poop, paper, toilet paper only, and puke. <laughs> Why should everything else go in the trash? Because trash that gets flushed down our toilets causes lots of issues in our system. It causes clogs in our pumps and our pipes, as you see here at Brightwater, and it takes a lot of energy to remove that trash from the water. So as the wastewater comes into the treatment plant, it first has to get passed through a screen that catches anything larger than the holes you see on this picture. And then it has to get removed from the screen, passed through a grinder to grind it up into little pieces, and then gets compacted to squeeze out excess water, and finally dumped in the back of a truck and hauled to a landfill, the very same place that trash would have gone had it been put in the garbage can next to your toilet. So that's the trash. Let's move on to the next step, which is primary treatment. This is where we slow everything down and empty the water into long, deep tanks and let it sit there for about six hours. We utilize a very advanced form of technology called gravity. <laughs> so similar to a pond at the end of a stream, slow-moving water allows particles to move either up or down, making it easier to remove them. Scum floats, solids sink. And we're forming three layers in this tank. So scum is going to be your oils, grease, hair, soaps and chemicals. Solids will be your heavy organic matter, so poop and food. And then the cleanest water in the middle. We have equipment in the tanks to remove the top and the bottom layers and moves the middle layer through to get cleaned further. This fairly simple process, gravity, is able to remove 50% of the solid particles. And you can see the difference in the two samples here, before and after primary treatment. So we remove the poop and the food and the grease, but what can we do with it? At Brightwater, we turn it into a resource. We convert 100% of this material into a fertilizer called a biosolid, as seen here in my own very hand. Um, so this fertilizer, can be used to grow plants. So if your water comes to Brightwater or King County's other treatment plants, all of your poop is used to grow plants somewhere in the state of Washington. Many people don't realize that. But of course, before this can happen, we have to use science and technology to make it a safe fertilizer. So as we're removing the solids from the water, all of it gets sent to a specific place in the treatment plant, and it goes through its own process. So this is where it's located on the plant. Moving towards two main goals for this process. Remove most of the water and treat the solids with heat and microorganisms. One way we remove some of that water is by using a gravity belt thickener. So it's a machine and we disperse the watery solids on top of a mesh conveyor belt, as you see here. The water drops through the holes 
And we also add a thickening agent so that those tiny particles can stick together so that by the time it reaches the end of the belt, it looks like this, much thicker. And then the real treatment happens. We put this material into what's called a digester. A digester is similar to our digestive system. So these are huge cylinder-shaped tanks. And they're cooked, or they're heated, I should say, at body temperature, 98 degrees. And it's an oxygen-free environment, just like our stomachs. In this environment, these microbes, certain microbes, are activated to consume and eat and break down some of those contaminants and pollutants in that material. So the material's in there for 30 days, getting cooked and also treated by the microbes before we can safely, safely apply it to the soil. And we are creating a very valuable fertilizer. You are all creating a very valuable fertilizer. So this is a photograph of farmers that are showing a comparison with wheat grown with chemical fertilizer versus the biosolids fertilizer. And you can see it's quite a stark difference. So another um, resource we're able to create from this process is energy, and that could be a whole other talk. But in short, when these microbes are digesting the material in the digesters, they're giving off a gas, which is methane. And we're able to use that gas for a boiler that heats the digesters themselves and also other buildings on our site. So let's get back to the water. So after the settling of primary treatment, we then pass the water to secondary treatment, specifically aeration. So similar to what is happening in the digesters, the microorganisms are providing the real treatment for the water in the step. In lakes and rivers, microbes can break down organic material in the presence of oxygen. And scientists have discovered we can speed up that process by adding more oxygen, which is exactly what's happening here. We're pumping these tanks full of air, and we're stimulating the growth of oxygen-loving and using microbes, like the ones you see here. So they go to work for us. They consume and break down some of the remaining pollutants in the water. And we are literally cultivating millions and millions of these microbes. But then we need to remove them, of course. So that is the next step. We pass this water through what we call a newer technology, membrane bioreactor filters. And this is a picture of one on the left. So it's an ultra filtration system that separates the bacteria from the water without using chemicals. So this um, cassette is what it's called that you see on the left. We have many of them submerged in our tanks. And um, the actual filters themselves look like narrow, hollow straws. There's a fiber material on the inside and a plastic coating on the outside. The plastic coating is porous, meaning that there are very, very tiny holes engineered into the plastic that are so small that only a water molecule or anything smaller, I'm gonna explain how small that is. If I were to line up 2,000 of those pores or holes side by side in a line, 2,000, the width of that line would only be as wide as a human hair width. That gives you an idea of how small I'm talking. So that means that the microorganisms and any other small particles in the water are too large to pass through these filters. But function. On top of each cassette, we have a vacuum or suction pulling upwards. And so when you apply that pressure, it's going to pull into the center of each filter just the water molecules. The microorganisms stay on the outside. So it's a physical barrier, but it's down to the micron level. And they do quite an effective job of cleaning the water as you can see in the sample. So the left sample is raw sewage, the sample in the middle is primary water, and the sample on the right is the water after it's been passed through the membranes, and it's clear. The final resource we're producing in this process is water. 20 million gallons of water every day. And even though it's not as pure as drinking water, it's still a very high quality water that we can use for many purposes. Any water that's reused from a treatment plant is called recycled water, and it's perfect for any soil application. Currently, bright water is sending most of this cleaned water into the Puget Sound, but some of it is reused um, for golf courses and other sports complexes instead of using drinking water. And that's the goal, is to keep moving towards that direction. Recycled water, in my opinion, is the water of the future. And in the not so distant future, Brightwater hopes to recycle 20 million gallons of this water every day. Thank you. <laughs>